Hello, I am JP Cooper and I'm very happy to be here with Access. I guess as a teenager, it's probably middle of my teen years, around 15, 16. Um, I think living in Manchester and being in Manchester, coming to the end of the 90s and obviously around that time, Manchester music was all over the world. So a lot of young lads had guitars kicking around. I think the reason why I discovered a love for music, if I hadn't have been in Manchester, I might have never discovered it because I didn't come from a musical family. So it's really just my friends playing guitars. It seems like such a long time ago. I mean, the reason I chose to, to study, I think at the time it was, I was studying PE, biology and English literature at um, my A level. Back then it was AS levels and then your A levels, so I don't know if you still have that now. It's been a long time since I studied. <laughs> After the first year, a friend of mine said, listen, my, my brother's going on this course with some of his mates, so I've been looking into it. And we made a little band at school, and I don't really know what it was. I think I must have just been gripped by music at that point. I was like, Oh, I'll come with you. I think that um, a lot of my friends were into like guitar music. That was just kind of what I fell into. So I think I, I kind of didn't really express that part of me. I didn't really feel like, I don't know, I hadn't delved into it that much. I was starting this kind of secret romance with soul music at that time and um, you know I was looking back and discovering because my real heroes at the time was like Pearl Jam and Soundgarden so you know um, the kind of grungy stuff but if, if you strip that away strip away the heavy guitars there's a lot of blues and a lot of soul in there and you know the, it's real songwriting and um, so I started delving a bit further back into that kind of world and discovered people like you know Donny Hathaway and Al Green and Marvin Gaye and Aretha Franklin and was really falling in love with them but I didn't really let on that I was listening to that until a lot later and joined the gospel choir and then really started to kind of marinate in soul music really and, and you know hopefully I've soaked up some of the flavours of that and so it was kind of a natural progression I was always kind of in love with it. But there's a lot of common ground in what we do, you know, if you listen to a lot of Stormzy's album, um, there's a lot of gospel influence in there. And the track that we did is a lot more, it's quite a gospel track really, um, in every sense. So, he started kind of showing up at my gigs about two years ago, you know, just while he was starting to, so you know, he kind of come backstage and was like, oh, you do, mate. And I think we were both really happy to meet each other and, you know, for quite a while we were saying, let's, let's get in the studio together, but, you know, obviously he's, very hard man to pin down, he's had a mad couple of years and he's still just going from strength to strength. And basically we've managed to get in a friend of mine, Hannah Vasanth, who's an incredible keys player, she used to play for Rihanna and Jesse J and she'd stopped doing the kind of um, session musician thing and she started like a, a producer artist project so she writes and she produces. Me and her had a session and Stormzy was about that day and he came in and I was like well why don't you pop in? He pops in for like four hours and we just penned this this lyric and Hannah had, had this kind of piano part and we, we recorded all the vocals and the piano in that four hours and you know wrote it. I don't know whether it's really like a dream festival, I think it's more like I just want that main stage sunset slot. There's nothing better than, you know, I've been at, at many of those gigs when the sun's going down and there's just thousands of people and everyone's having a good time. Everyone's got a little buzz on and yeah, that's like, that's, that's pretty special, no matter where it is. Not really, just I, what I always warm up and warm down, I'm quite strict when it comes to like, my voice, so warming up and warming down. Other than that, I used to get really nervous, like years ago I used to get really nervous, so I tend to get myself into this weird, I don't know how, sometimes I have to like, wake myself up before because I'm so used to calming myself down. Now naturally I'm like almost too calm before I go on stage so I have to kind of lively up myself a bit before I go on. The thing for me to focus on was um, my own breakthroughs. You know, every great new song you write is a massive breakthrough or just moving up to the bigger venue in your city or anything. So there was constant progression. So for me, that's why I'm more excited about what doors the album will open rather than what number I get to in the charts. Of course, it'd be amazing to have a top five record or a top 10 record, but the main thing for me is just 
building on where you already are. Because if you get caught up in numbers and well he's there and I'm here, you can't enjoy it anymore. I think the main thing is just be grateful and be proud of your own breakthroughs and continue to do that. Don't expect the world to fall at your feet in one year. It takes a long time and if that's all you're focusing on, you're going to get frustrated very, very quickly.